Good morning, everybody. It is mid-August and it is early Monday morning. We're going to do this garden tour because if I don't do this with you now, I just won't do it, you know? Everything gets so crazy so quickly every day that, uh, you know, I come up with a million and one reasons why now is not the right time to do this for you, but we're going to do it and it is what it is. It's crazy boom time in the garden. So um, I'm going to take you on a whirlwind through all the gardens and we can see what's up what's working and what's not working because we're growing in some very different ways here this year and I'm learning a ton for sure. Um, we've still got some things propagating here in the propagation area. The figs have done really well. They need to get potted up. We've got stevia that we um, propagated. It's doing really well too. A few other things. Um, elderberries. We planted several of these elderberries. I'm not quite sure what to do with these ones there because I had so many of them do well. I have to find a home for them somewhere on the property. Um, you name, your name escapes me every time I come to you. Yucca, yucca, survivalist plant. Have to find a really good home for these guys on the property. These are all mulberries that successfully propagated from cuttings. Um, and then a couple of other fun things. White sage, peach lowry sage over there doing beautifully. And then in the propagation station, there are two things that are coming up super late, super late turmeric and ginger they're going to need to come into the house because those aren't going to do well as soon as it starts to get cold those are going to turn yellow and die we have yams growing sorry sweet potatoes growing in these um, in these ginormous buckets and they're doing extremely well so i'm curious to see what comes out of those this year i have two of those and then we also have them planted in the garden do a little bit of comparison to see the difference between the two this is what the greens garden is looking like now not bad, not bad. She's doing beautifully. We're still waiting on seed from some of these. Here are some lettuce plant gone to seed. We just pick these little white guys off like this and we squish them and there you go. Oops, lots and lots of seed. They seed beautifully and there's so much of it, but I can't stop myself from collecting it because this year with the seed shortages, the way that they were, you know, I'm a little bit more uh, meticulous this year about saving seed everywhere I can. Um, we've already saved a ton of it. The mustard is going to seed, so that's great. Get a move on girls, let's go. Um, and then we've planted between the rows, so there are greens um, and kale and things that will come up as um, late summer greens. Uh, those all went in, the seed went into the ground when we knew that we had 60 days left until first frost. So first frost in, in zone four is looking like first week of October, but it could come earlier. You take a gamble when you plant your fall garden, right? You don't really know what you're going to get. This was all lettuce at greens and um, other ornamentals and edibles. I'm going to let these guys do what they want to do. If they want to seed, they can self sow till for next year. That's fine. I That garden is shaded. It doesn't produce highly anyway, so it's going to do what it wants. Some things you have to let go. The medicinals and flower garden is doing really well. We've already harvested quite a bit out of here. All of our marjoram for the year. We could do another round. All of these are marjoram all along the edge here. And um, you little mess, what are you? Calendula. We've made an oil with this calendula that I'm hoping will be really good for skin. And Tulsi basil is doing beautifully. It smells incredible. We'll have to bring some of that in and dry it and save the seed. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. Marshmallow and uh, zinnias. This beautiful eight foot tall sunflower that we keep cutting from, fresh cut flowers for the guests in the B&B. So today it's really about taking stock and catching up. Oh, there's the hubs off to work. Have a good day, babe. Love you. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> Yeah, we do a big swap -a early in the morning on Mondays. He takes care of the animals, goes off to work, and then I come out and start dealing with the gardens and then regroup with the kids. Planted some zucchini underneath this tree, um, and we planted these weeks ago. I really expected them to be doing much better than this, but alas, I think zucchini and other uh, vining plants like it prefer to be planted more in a mound as opposed to in, um, how do you say that in English? Like a dugout area. They're not doing great, but maybe it has time. Maybe it has time. Let's see. 
if it can pull itself together. Um, the food forest. Food forest is doing beautifully. It's really picking up and establishing. We've got stuff growing just about in every nook and cranny that I could find space. So these goji berries are doing beautifully. Look at them. Look at them. All over the place. Yeah, yeah. Num num. We eat those every day. Oh, look at these bees doing their work here. Look. Hey guys. Doing their work pollinating. Right? I'm trying to see here if we have any. Oh, look at you guys. Working hard, working hard. These are all looking like male flowers still. Oh no, look. There's one right there. There's a female with some fruit. And <clears throat> by the size of it, it looks like that was successfully pollinated. So we'll get some really beautiful zucchini over there. Zucchini are just starting to come up now. I don't know why it's coming so late for us, but um, this guy looks like he's packed and he's probably going to give us some fruit eventually once we see some more female flowers and they start pollinating. We've already harvested some really dark zucchini from these beautiful plants. Any more guys? Any more going on in here? Not today. But in the food forest there's lots. Lots growing. You really have to let it go. You have to just breathe and let it go because um, it's not going to grow in like perfect little rows. You're not going to get consistency across your plants and some things just aren't going to work like these melons here. They're here but I mean there's no time left for these to set fruit. That would have had to happen already by now if they um, you know in order to have enough time to mature so that's just not happening. But this um, this beautiful what are you? You are a silver leafed buffalo berry. That's what you are. They're establishing really beautifully. Those are nitrogen fixers. Oh my gosh. I think I just found a melon. Look. 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 Yes. Yes. <laughs> There's a melon in the garden. Oh my gosh. Look at you. How cute you are in there hiding. Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh, you sweet thing. I'm so glad I brought you out here. Look what I found. The kids are going to be so stoked when they see that. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. That means there might be another one out here. We're going to have to go melon hunting later on. All right. Okay. That's good. You see, along this strip last year, along this strip that you see along the driveway here, all the way behind me to this corner here, um, I was growing um, cucumbers and uh, tomatoes last year so and, and we were um, piling it up in the spring early spring and late fall with chicken bedding um, which decomposes over winter so it's quite fertile so if something is going to make it it's probably going to be in these side beds. The blueberries are establishing this guy's really small but there are others here. This one here has got some red leaf and last time we put some um, uh, uh, rabbit manure at its base and the red leaves turned green again so I'm gonna try that again and see if it's just hungry and needs to be fed some nutrition I am so stoked about that melon I can barely contain myself what are you you must be an apple this is an apple doing very well this was um, we planted this bare root just this year so all the plants are doing well I mean they have to survive a winter and that's probably the trickiest part but they're doing really well and I think that you know the soil is doing well too because we're seeing mushrooms pop up everywhere and as far as I understand it that is a really good sign so I'm pretty excited to see that and then I just spotted another look at this gorgeous zucchini coming out of here hello mama where are you come hello hello to you you're a big beautiful zucchini thank you so that's two two beautiful zucchinis oh, oh, oh. I'm excited about that too. Oh, I'm so glad we're doing this tour. I'm finding stuff that I didn't know I had. In here, what have we got here? What are you? You are a peppercorn, acorn, acorn squash, acorn squash. And these are doing beautifully. We've already harvested a couple, a couple in here. Hard to get in here, so messy. Where are you? There you are. We've got some little brothers and sisters hanging out here. 
making their way into the world. These are two plants side by side and I'd say they're probably about seven or eight in there right now. We've already harvested two so that's amazing because I think those will keep quite some time. Another apple with a beautiful grasshopper. Hi buddy. You're not here to do damage I hope. Keeping the Japanese beetles off these plants is my daily routine. I come with a bucket and water and I just flick them into the bucket of water and then I go and dump them into the chickens um, water trough and they love them. So everybody wins and the Japanese beetles don't kill my plants. Sunflower is coming up. Oh my gosh, look at that one. That's so pretty. That's... Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. Let's go have a look at it. It's red. Red sunflower. This is gorgeous. I think this is from Hawthorne. Hawthorne Farms. Look at you. You match my sweater. Oh my gosh, I love you. You're beautiful. And this beautiful guy up here. Hi, sweet face. Face in the sun coming up. Okay, all right, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, this is exciting now. That's great, you know what? This is the time of year, man. Everything's overgrown and crazy and you have to kind of chill a bit. What are you, seaberry buckthorn? Yes, doing well. Doesn't seem to mind being surrounded by all of this um, natural foliage, weeds, beautiful plants doing their thing. And then we've got a bunch of these little you know, these little, I don't even know what you are. You're probably a zucchini or something like that. These little ones that maybe with 50, if we get 50 days before last frost, maybe we still have a chance of getting some fruit out of those guys, but they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to book it. They're gonna have to make some serious moves here. What else do we have in here? I know in here, just last week, ah, we planted another set of bush beans and here they are coming up. We saw that we had a couple of days of rain coming, so we quickly um, planted our favorite yellow and, um, and green bush beans, and they're coming up all throughout this area here. And, you know, the rain is just doing its thing, like we don't water, so very, very rarely, only under super dire circumstances are we watering, so that's like almost never. What have we got here? Some squash, looks like some spaghetti squash hiding there. There's a big beautiful one. I've got my eye on you, baby. Got my eye on you and some kind of squashity squash over there. That'll be amazing to see how that turns out. Try not to step on those beans. Come over to this. What are you? You're a pear. A pear tree. Again, planted bare root. And the base is surrounded um, now by Queen Anne's lace and clover and chicory. It doesn't seem to mind one bit, and I'm, I'm pretty sure those things are keeping the moisture in, so, you know, I'm gonna go with it. It's working. Let's, let's see if it keeps working. Black currants have been producing too, and we just planted these in this year, and they've been producing. They're pretty delicious too. And then, again, these like rando zooks. Who knows? No, that, you're not a zucchini for sure. You're some kind of squash. It could be birdhouse gourd. It could be spaghetti squash. I really don't know. Over here I've been moving medicinals that I find out in the field and moving them into the garden hoping that they'll seed here next year. Like St. John's wort, which we um, made an oil out of as well, an infused oil. And yarrow, which is going to establish as its first year, grew that from seed. And then this mullein. I'm hoping that it will find permanent residence here. And what are you? Oh right, horseradish. Alright man, you don't mind being out here one bit. Look how strong and tough those leaves are, that's beautiful. So that's part of the, over here, the part of the food forest. We're going to have a look at, um, these are probably the first beds that we ever established. Walk over here without stepping on the beans. Um, the raised beds. The raised beds are in transition because some of them we have harvested from already. Harvested uh, onions, some garlic, holy bananas, mushroom colonies establishing themselves. These beds are hugoculture beds they're um, underlaid with all kinds of um, sticks and things that I found around the property much you know early in the spring. Filled it in and then filled it with um, one-year-old chip uh, wood chips that we had laying around on the property. And next year, you know, I'll put some compost over those in the fall time. And then next year, these will be ready to plant right into. And there are three on this side, one over there. So I don't know what we're going to grow in here, but you know, you have to think ahead because um, you know next year's beds. It takes time, if you're doing it naturally, it takes time to establish the beds. 
this garlic is done so and needs to come out. Not very excited about the size of the garlics this year. Not bad actually. What am I crying about? That's not so bad. I'm glad I left them in a little bit longer. And these walking onions, those are delicious. Put those in some miso soup yesterday. Those were awesome. Carrots, I mean these carrots, there are so few of them that we're going to, I'm going to be leaving these probably to go to seed for next year. So that next year I'll have a ton of carrot seed. Strawberries are doing so well. These gardens, these two strawberry garden patches here were created with, in about April I started with, you know, maybe 30 of these little guys. And now we have this and this. And, um, I mean, they're not going to bear fruit this year and that's okay. You know, the idea is to get them established this year and they certainly will do that. And we'll be able to supply somebody else with a garden next year, just from pulling from those runners. Rapini's coming up. We can probably take some of that pretty soon. Those onions are going to seed. That's great because we're going to need some more seed for next year. Onion seed. These are gorgeous. They will flower and then they will, they will dry out and we'll put those away in a little envelope for next year. So this is the time where we're switching gears for sure. So like you might not be planting stuff. I mean, we were planting stuff about two or three weeks ago. We were planting the final round probably for the year, but right now it's mostly about um, keeping up with the harvest because it's intense. Um, there's a lot coming out of the garden and if you don't do something with it, I mean, you're going to lose it. It's a waste. So we're keeping up with that. Um, I am not weeding <laughs> and you're going to see in a minute what that looks like. It's wild, man. I'm, I'm working my way through um, Fokuoka's book, uh, One Straw Revolution, and it's putting my trepidatious heart at ease um, about what we're doing here and um, about how we don't need to stress uh, about growing amongst the weeds, that there is, there is a natural order to it. So I'm having to calm my little heart. What are you? You're cute. Spaghetti squash, maybe? I hope we like spaghetti squash. This is our plum tree, Japanese beetles hanging out. You guys are going down today. I'm coming back for you. Give me 10 minutes. That's candy for the chickens. And this beautiful peach really had to take its time getting established, but it's it's making it. It's making it. Got a bunch of these has caps growing down there. And if you're wondering what these are all for, it's because we cut little holes we drill little holes in the um, in the hose, and this goes on top to direct the water straight to the house cap, and not like having it spray all over the meadow, which we don't really need. We need it directed. We've got lots of comfrey growing everywhere. I split it and moved it around the property, so we've got several growing everywhere now. I wonder what you are. You look like you could be a zucchini because you're going straight up. We'll see shortly, and this is our beautiful cherry tree. She's doing quite well. Again, also from bare root this, this spring. These Japanese cucumbers are, have been here forever, forever. Come on guys, get with the program. Let's go, let's go. They still have time, they still have time. I have yet to eat a single cucumber from our garden this year and it's driving me crazy because, uh, you know, everybody else is pickling and fermenting their cukes and uh, I have yet to eat one. But maybe we're just not growing them in ideal circumstances. These guys, I don't know how well they're able to photosynthesize down here if they've got grass in the way. You're going to see a lot of that in the garden. Some things are thriving and some things are suffering. Caught a couple, well, I don't know what you are. I don't know really what that is. Someone fill me in. Some kind of squash. Some kind of something. Unless you're going to be an enormous zucchini. Ah, look at all these little baby pickles. Hi, baby pickle. Tickle, tickle. So that's looking awesome. Looks like we're gonna see some cucumbers and pickles coming out of here. That's great. Okay, that's that's awesome. Good, it's coming, it's time. I thought there was a larger one in here. Gosh, you guys are so cute when you're little. I'm gonna have to have a look around and see if I can find any others. That's looking awesome. All right, good. So, you know, it's looking promising. We're not there yet, but it's coming along. I could have sworn there was a larger one in here. But we've got a mama and her baby roaming here too, and I don't know. 
I see black raspberries today and then I don't see them tomorrow, so I have a feeling that these two, these two cuties are eating them. Hi, Mama. We're letting her free range with her baby and, oh, did you give your baby a kiss? You're cute. And just teach her babe what needs to be learned out here in the wild before they go and join the rest of the flock. We've got some cucumbers coming across the fence here from the other side, from the inside of the garden. It's starting to get hard to get in there. I think we're going to see cucumbers. We are. They're just going to be a little, a little late. A little late. But there are some things that are doing really well. The raspberry patches are all establishing. Next year I'm sure we'll get tons of fruit. And these are self-seeding um, sunflowers doing beautifully. Shall we check on the birds and the pigs? Are they still sleeping? Hey guys, you up? Hello, good morning. Good morning, everybody. The pigs are sleeping in. Chickens are up. Shep is up following me around. Hey, boo. We're not going to let him in the garden after us because he just steps on everything. Oh, and there's a little... Is that a kid in her pajamas? Put your chicken clothes on before you come out. All right, in here, let's have a look at what's going on. This is overwhelming, okay? Take a deep breath. I know I'm talking to myself, Angela, take a deep breath. It's beautiful, but it's crazy. So this garden has been rocking now since the first week of June. We are in second week of August. So that would make it what, like week 10, okay? Week 10. These guys are fennel, which I grew from direct, direct sowing in the garden. They're doing beautifully. We're putting on some good size now. They're probably gonna need a good deal of water. They weren't enjoying the competition. They weren't able to photosynthesize with a bunch of weeds around them. So I have been pulling weeds around them and put down some chips so they could stay nice and moist. These two beds, this two, two small beds, this one and that one there, I just harvested 14 and a half pounds of beetroot and beet leaves. And those went into some ferments and some pickling and um, and the leaves went chopped up into the freezer and they'll be there waiting for us in winter when we want some something for like a, a greens with curry type of saute. That's what I do with them. I think they're delicious. These tomatoes, which you can't see because the grass is so tall, they're doing all right. I mean, they're putting on, putting on some size over here. These ones are transplanted from dad's garden. So they're not doing nearly as well as ours are. We've been harvesting tomatoes for days and days and I'll show you those in a minute. But these are some very slow starting um, squash and zucchini. You know, I don't label everything. I try, but I just couldn't keep up with it. So I'm not entirely sure what all of it is until it comes out and reveals itself to me, which is fine. It's all surprises, it's fun. But they still have about, you know, 40, 50 days before first frost. So. They should, um, they should come up. I'm expecting to see some fruit. If they, I know if they can make it, they will. They're gonna try. And we've got some tiny bean plants that I planted right at the beginning, but because of their location, they weren't terribly happy. But they are still producing a few each. The rows of beans are doing really well. We harvest from them every day. And they're growing in tandem with a bunch of uh, grass and, uh, and weeds too. But once they got established, they didn't seem to mind. Like they're producing quite well. The Japanese beetles are loving the pole beans. I don't know why they're leaving the bush beans alone, but they're loving the pole beans. It's such a drag, but it's really just a five minute job. It's not the end of the world. You just have to come out right away in the morning, flick them off the leaves. There you are, sitting underneath the leaf there. I think they're mating. Enjoy your time. Soon will be over. Sweet potatoes are doing really well. They're putting on foliage. I don't actually know what's going on underground. We'll see how well they actually do. Save that bean for later. We have been making pesto like crazy. It's hiding here, but it's there. And in place of where we took out the beetroots, we planted some more um, ground cherries. The kids are loving the ground cherries and so am I. So 
a, a few weeks ago we started some more from seed at the house and we transplanted them the ground cherries are doing okay but they've been suffering they've been suffering with competition but mostly um pest pest pressure on these poor little babies but they're doing great they've really picked up on some size now and they're putting out these beautiful little um this beautiful little what would you call these lantern once they get husky then you can eat the fruit out of them and they're super delicious they're like the candy of the garden the kids are really loving them if we hop on through here the celery is doing extremely well we've been eating celery celery for weeks we've frozen some of it we've fermented some of it fermented celery is delicious i'd never done that before the okra is doing well it's starting to put on another pod here it's not doing wonderfully but it's doing all right it's growing alongside some basil and some mint and cauliflowers which we may or may not see this season they've succumbed to some pest damage as well but i can't identify what it is i'm not finding any cabbage worms or anything like that so i don't know maybe slugs i haven't actually seen i haven't been witness to whatever it is that's eating my cauliflower and probably the stinkiest part of the garden at the moment is this tobacco. So we're harvesting, harvesting and drying the leaves and we've already gifted that to a number of friends. And um, those, are, those are looking beautiful. So we could harvest those. And then, you know, like one of these little pods here has, you know, thousands of seeds in it. I mean, it's just filled. So it's, you know, this is a great one to share with people because one pod is enough for them and everyone who lives on their street so it's, it's fun to share seed because you know what it can do. Hey, baby cakes. This tomatoes. Is the tomatoes. Chicken head is always good at finding tomatoes. Oh, careful, okra plant right at your feet. Well done, good stuff. Oh yeah, can I have one? Yeah. Thanks. Mm. Not bad breakfast, huh? Is doggy dog liking it too? Hey, okay, careful with your step, okay? okay. All right. Eggplants are doing beautifully really big bushy plants but we need to start seeing some fruit set because those are going to need time to grow so let's have a look we've got some have we got any fruit in here hey babe i found a melon i'm going to show it to you when i'm done here a watermelon? yes a, a watermelon. watermelon yeah sincere it's about the size of a softball right now no second oh there's a you're not allowed here goodbye thank you so i don't see any fruit setting in here yet i'm going to keep an eye on that yeah, because I'd like to see some, I'd like to see some eggplants. We can do some eggplants in oil with spices. Yum. Oh my gosh, so good. The red cabbages are doing pretty well. This guy has, um, he's succumbed to pest pressure. Definitely being bore out there by some pests, but that's okay. I'm going to let him stay and they can have him if they want a little sacrificial cabbage. Got some... Uh, uh, green onions and Walla Walla onions that we started from seed didn't have a great amount of success with seeding onions This year. I'd like to get better at that. That's one of my ambitions is to get better at that And then this Waltham broccoli here. Oh, no, it's DiCicco broccoli What did you find? I know I saw that zucchini. It's beautiful Tomatoes, okay, so tomatoes have been a lot of fun because we love tomatoes in this house We've got some beaver slicers here, some romas back there, some black creme that are big and gorgeous. Right here, these are beautiful. They're doing really well. I mean, there's no shortage of tomatoes in this garden. They're um, everywhere. And they're, you know, they're falling to the ground. They're surrounded by weeds. The tomatoes don't mind, man, okay? And they're doing really well. And I actually think that this is what why things like cabbage are able to grow out in the open here because typically in our area in our zone you can't grow cabbage and broccoli out in the open normally the you know the pest will destroy them but i think that because everything is growing you know with a bunch of wildlife around it that might explain why it's thriving maybe not so much some things like maybe the peppers aren't loving it as much Although they're putting on some size too, and we are getting a lot of uh, these. What are these? Cayenne peppers. And uh, so the red roasters haven't really started fruiting yet, but they're getting there. They're putting on some size. 
um, but it's the tomatoes that we're swimming in at the moment and I'm even at the point where I'm able to start freezing some for sauces for winter so that's great I mean I'd love to can some tomato sauce my family does it every year but I mean dad has to grow a ton of tomatoes for us to do that I think it's like 10 bushels to make enough tomato sauce for our family for the year so that's an insane amount of tomatoes but they're doing well like the plants are packed yes there are things like hornworms which I might find for you as we go but this is what it looks like when you've got a hornworm you've got a little arm of your tomato plant that is leafless and uh, I mean yesterday I killed a lot of worm uh, picked them hornworms and fed them to the chickens and they love them so there you won't probably find many or any but when you see this you can usually follow it back follow the stem back and at some point you'll see a big nasty hornworm hanging out on your tomato plants. Um, so you have to do a little bit of investigating, but usually there are clues. There are clues. And if you leave them long enough, you know, they'll put the plant in a state where it can't photosynthesize because it doesn't have a lot of foliage. And hornworms will also eat your tomatoes, so you don't want a lot of that. I mean, we've got big bunches of tomatoes hanging out here, waiting. See. This looks like hornworm, right there. So that's, a, let's bring this to the chickens, Bella. Okay. Here, take these two. The chickens won't mind. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Nasty critters, nasty hornworms. Well, they're somebody's kid, so let's not be mean about it. Lots of tomato, and they don't seem to mind, you know. A lot of people say that you shouldn't let your tomatoes touch the ground because then they uh, they're more susceptible to disease and that's probably true, but because we've had so little rain um, I think it's less true this year than it would be if we'd had a you know a really rainy year When there's a lot of precipitation hanging out on the lower portions of the plant So you do have to dig a little bit so you have to be willing because there it is in there There are several Roma tomatoes that are ready to come into the house We'll have to dig those out not dig. We'll just have to kind of go in there and fetch them when we have a minute, right? These ones are yellow banana, right? No, orange banana, orange banana tomatoes. Yeah, those ones are beautiful too. And these ones are turning out to be my favorite this year. What are these called? These are- uh, Green tiger. Right, green tiger tomatoes. These ones are amazing. They're meant to be eaten green and they're probably the sweetest tomato that we have in the garden at the moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, I'll take one. Thank you. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, come on. Can't get enough of that. We've started harvesting a number of potatoes because we couldn't wait because we love fresh potatoes from the garden. If you've never grown potatoes from your garden and eaten potatoes from your garden, I'm telling you, there is nothing like it. You cannot buy a potato that tastes as good unless maybe you have a really good quality farmer's market near you. But fresh potatoes from the garden, in the house, in your mouth, delicious so good so each of these plants is producing about what would you say kids about three five or six three three i think it's more like three babe yeah i would say three potatoes so a piece if, if you include the small ones about five or six if you include the small ones sure fair enough but these ones here um we've been we've been harvesting them just because we want to eat them but they're really not ready, ready yet and when the leaves start to go when the leaves start to go brown they'll be ready right kids Yes. Um, okay, so let's see if we can wait. We, don't, like we can't wait. We just want to eat them. Like yeah, that one looks like it's succumbing. And, this. Um, and back here is a beautiful white pumpkin. Look at this beauty. Look at you, honey bunny. Hi. You beautiful white pumpkin. You're so beautiful. How are you doing over here? hanging out in the shade mind your own beeswax all right that's good let's go check on the corn so we've been growing three rows of corn different varieties which maybe might not be so smart because corn can cross pollinate and we're if we're saving seed then we might not get what we think we're going to get next year when we go to plant these but we've interplanted corn with um with pole beans this year and the pole beans are climbing 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 we have yet to harvest anything from these pole beans, eh kids? We haven't really seen, we haven't had any beans per se. I have seen, I think. Have you? Well, we should be picking them. They're small. 
Oh, what's this? A pepper from my garden over there. Yeah, Alma paprika. A yeah. Hungarian pepper that Papa really likes. Because he's Hungarian. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Um, these are doing really well too, actually. It might be time soon to harvest. We've harvested a couple of cabbage that have gone into the beet and cabbage um, ferment. But they're doing okay. They're not as big as I'd like them to be, so we're going to leave them a little bit longer. And the ones that I harvested were a little bit on the hollow side. This one's nice and tough. This one's getting pretty. Really good. Yeah, it is Are really you good. Cut the whole thing off from the stem bottom. Uh, yeah, yeah. Whoa, oh, there's a slug. Let's good. get the slug off of here. Let's get that yeah. slug. Goodbye, slug. Please don't throw it at me. Can you guys put this back in place? Another tomato. <laughs> It's nice, thanks, babe. Not as yummy as a cherry. The broccoli, uh, we could harvest some broccoli today, kids. So, like, when you harvest the head of a broccoli, a broccoli plant will put out several smaller shoots around it. So, we harvested the center head here. So, there was a center head here, and now it's put out one, two, three, four, five, six little broccoli can shoots. You help me, Mama? Yeah, I can help you. So, can it keeps on giving. I'll come back and fix that later, okay? okay. All right, I think we've only got a couple more things that we can show and tell. And then it'll be time for us to go in. Have we showed them the corn? The corn, yes, the corn is doing beautifully. Gosh, that's stunning to look at. It's not ready to pick yet. As soon as the silks go brown, that's when we know it's time to pick them. What when the silks go brown. The silks sticking out of the top of the corn that's husk. Small. The quinoa is doing really well. That's it's great. starting to turn a little bit Wuggy, slug, slug. pink. And that's how we know that it's almost time for the quinoa. You know, basically quinoa is the seed, so you're going to wait for this to turn pink, it's going to flower, and then it will create little seed pods that will take and um, separate the chaff from the seed and put that away for winter time. We've got a couple of more okra plants doing pretty well. I mean, that's a nice sized okra plant. Oh, there's a pod. Oh, two pods. Let's take this big pod, shall we? Let's harvest this one. Oh my gosh, that got a little bit big. That got away from me. We should have come out here with a pair of clippers. Ah, oh, there we go. Anybody want to try this baby? Mm, doesn't have a first bite. This guy got a bit big. Here you go. Oh, you don't have any hands left. Your hands are full. You want one? You have to come out with a basket next time. Okay. You here, want you can put them in my pouch. Hey, you want one to eat? Not right now. Okay. I'm having okra. These are the kids' cherry tomatoes. Their cherry tomato patch. There are a lot of cherry tomatoes in here. Thank you. It's a bit of a hunting. Uh -huh. But actually, I'm I'm the best at finding them. I find them all. They can't really hide. They can't really hide. Not, they, they have not, no chance against you. Mm, and these not, cabbage here, these red cabbage that are growing full on amongst all this. What is this stuff even? Like I don't know. Um, it could be maybe curly dock and some um, dandelion some uh, field Can I show them something grass. crazy? Can yeah, in a them? second. Marigolds, and you know, it's doing extremely well. Actually, this is a really beautiful head of cabbage, guys. What's that? Look how small this ready cherry tomato is. <laughs> it is baby That's size. a cute one, right? This guy's still little, he oh, needs no, some time. Oh wait, it's bad, see? Oh dear, give it to the chickens, they don't mind. Wait. So, that's pretty much what's going on here in the garden. Go, it's producing a lot. We've got some things that we planted in succession, like the ground cherries. Um, what else have we planted a second round of? Well, oh, this um, okra. okra, yeah. Some uh, beans, second round of beans that you saw out there. Cherries, a lot of greens, yep, yeah, we called that. So there are a lot of things that are going through. We're gonna get a second harvest out of, hopefully if this cold holds out and we don't get early frost. We have a cantaloupe vine here might give us something but i don't see anything on it yet so my guess is oh what are you look oh my god look what we're finding today all kinds of good things it's a little cantaloupe oh uh, can you show me the watermelon now i will in just a second mommy wait before you continue so some things it's doing great babe so some of the things that we've noticed is that even in a crazy overrun garden this is the time of year where you kind of have to take a deep breath and you have to let things let things go and it's a timing game right because the season is going to the season is going to end in early October and um, the plants that are giving you fruit have had enough time to establish themselves that 
the weeds and things that are growing alongside them are not a threat to them. It's more like a visual threat, <laughs> visual assault. <laughs> For those of you who really um, are married to the idea of having tidy gardens, and like that was me, you know, I thought that if you didn't have a tidy garden that, um, you know, you weren't a good gardener. But now that I've done uh, a whole slew of different research, learning about um, building up soil and keeping your soil healthy and feeding the soil by allowing all of this green cover to coexist with the vegetables that you're growing, um, it's really just a timing game. As long as these plants produce fruit uh, for us and we get a decent yield, then it's not to their detriment to have all these weeds alongside them. And in fact, it is feeding the soil for next year and the year after and the year after that. And we're still getting a yield and then the you know, the pigs and the chickens will come in here in October and they'll spend much of the winter out here with an A-frame that they can cozy up into. And they will eat everything that remains. Um, they will manure all over it. And then in the springtime, we'll come in here and we'll plant again. And next year, we're hoping that we will not have to till. This year we tilled and as a result, we got a lot of blowback from these weeds. So next year should be a little bit easier to deal with. So that's about it. I'm going to say goodbye now. Thanks for um, thanks for coming around with me. I know it was kind of a long one. There's a lot going on out here. Right kids? Yeah. All right. Happy growing folks. Bye.